should be all right. Yeah. Yeah, turn on. Right. So, Pony slaps in the iron wash. You may as well do your voice over a bit. Just press that to start it. And start. I could do it with the doing like little overview afterwards as oh, well. Right. I'll do yeah, the opposite free. way around and then just cut it in and just do it for the start that way around. Yeah, feel free. So the ion wash uses a generator that's supposedly uh, an ion generator. Uh, yeah. Well, I would just think it's more like a Samsung eco bubble, bubble thing. <laughs> just a pump that spins. And the pump turns off and on during the cycle. Uh, is there any trouble with having this blacked out door? Might have to be the so the iron wash only goes up to four, only washes up four, so you can only select four. Yeah, it only does a 1200 spin and you can't add options to it. Yeah. But it only takes 59 minutes. Yeah. And gets excellent results, basically. That's it. It's supposed to be as good as a 90 oil, as a, as a three hour cotton, but. Yeah. Just a shame we. Uh, um, it's about the best I can get. I'm also move this what if you put on the floor firing up at the drum? Okay. No. no, it's even worse. <laughs> you got? Have you still got your YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much defunct now. Because I can put a link on it anyway. Ah, you're right. Don't worry about it. All that's on there is just rubbish now. <laughs> no, Jaguar's not the work, basically. No, it's all Volvo stuff for them, because I've not had to repair the Jags yet. Right. The only thing that the blue ones cost me is um, the gearbox repair, which wasn't Jags' fault, it's a known issue on that model. In fact, Gearbox. Yeah. It's Once. fractured. Right. So what happened was it won't get any enough oil pressure. So it just clunk into gear. Is that just basically because of the design of it? It's yeah. a weak point. Yeah, what it is is when um, XF made this gearbox, the casting wasn't the greatest because you can tell that it's not, it's cast, it's not milled. Yeah. So what happened was there was a known fault with them. And because mine's low mileage, it only happened to me. A couple of years ago, most of them have all been fixed by now. No. Right. But considering the part that's in now is actually milled aluminium, it'll last for a while. So we've got a jet that turns on and off. Yeah. Uh, it seems to turn. Our water level's actually up to the. Yeah. It's just a little bit above the door seal. Yeah. It, the jet only turns on when the drum moves, I think. It sounds a bit more like. Because me 2K1 lost it, right? It was intermittent at the first. Yeah. Oh, they would switch off during yeah. eating, they would yeah. switch on permanently during washing. Oh, well, that one that you've just collected off me would run continuously regardless. Normally, you have like there isn't that many programs per se. Yeah. It's all sort of quite simple programming. Yeah, but you do it through the things like Time Expert Dose yeah. Aid. Well, there because um, with Dose Aid, what it does is you load it up and it um, you load it up, you press Dose Aid, and it weighs the drum. Yeah. And then it tells you in grams how much, how much to put in, which you know I'm not 100% sure if it's perfect or not, but. You know, well, it's uh, it normally comes like sort of preset, but because yeah. the Whirlpool ones are the same. Yeah. I mean, preset I until to, you got it set. Yeah. I did have to tell it it was um, we're in a soft water area, so that actually does drop the amount it needs quite a bit, so it's not too bad. Um, the allergy wash is quite interesting because it 
turns, it has the steam. Algae steam, yeah. It has the steam, it has the ion wash, and it has the um, uh, pump running, all the while keeping the water at 90 degrees. That's like full on mode. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to say the allergy mode is designed, you know, for people who have problems with bed bugs and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so, be good for washing pillows and duvets. Pillows, duvets, bed sheets. But because our, yeah, our last works in the kitchen all day and in chef, in basically in chef wise. Yeah. That's why that other one's in such good condition because so it had to do a 90 degree every week to get our last to show. At least you wash them properly. I know chefs that still don't wash at 90. Well, no, no. Still I, only wash at 40, it's like. It was kind of a. It was kind of a point of pride that when our last's clothes, our last went into work, the clothes were all spotless. And the crystal light. Mm. It's like, well, I'm I'm a goth at heart, so usually when I'm at work, I'm in jet black. Yeah. So jet black trousers, jet black shoes, jet black shirt. And it was always a pride of, quite a pride that I didn't get, um, that they didn't fade either. Most of my stuff's all dark. I mean, it, I, I come from the emo gen the emo generation, but I don't dress emo, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mind you saying that, I do like putting my black jeans on the band t shirt on. Mm. That's not one of my favourite wears. Although I generally just stick anything on. It's generally jeans and a t shirt or some sort of canned description. I work in IT, fella. I'm not going to say anything like that. You know, for a fact that people work in IT are scruffy as all that. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? As I am scruffy. And I am pretty geeky. Well, I'm kind of geeky in a weird way. Here's your boot. Well, I'm not one for going picking up on the new. My dad has more new tech than I have. It's like I didn't have a tablet. I had a keyboard. Well, I had this. I had. Let's latest. put it this way. Do you know what that? You know, in the garage, you know that monitor, that telly there, that's not in its case. Do you know what that's for? No. That's actually being made into a magic mirror. So the idea is that you have it so that it stands up landscape, but it's behind a mirror. No. Right. Two-way mirror glass. And then when you walk in front of it, it trips a PIR sensor, which turns the power onto the telly. That's connected to a Raspberry Pi and a special distribution that shows you all the stuff. So you stand in front of the mirror. A it bit like, uh, like you see, got basically the sun did it, and the next thing you got all this information. Yes. So what it does is it shows you the date, time, syncs to Google Calendar, so you can put in it. Bin X needs to go out this time. It knows what it knows what bus Alas needs to get to work. So it picks. That's one of those say like sci-fi. So when that bus is going to be at the end yeah. of the road. It, uh, it knows where I work, so it, does, it knows how long it does a Google map to check for traffic, so it tells me what time I need to set off to get to work on enough yeah. time. Um, I can tie it into the 3D printer, so I can literally walk past it and I can see what it's doing when, so I can check the status of the 3D printer on it. When I were used to mine cryptocurrency, you could get cryptocurrency stats on it as well, but I don't do that anymore because it's not profitable. <laughs> But yeah, I did use my site proper like. But the th the thing is, all this is software that's free, legal free software. Yeah. Um, the telly was literally being thrown in a skin. It's one. Of, it's my cousin's old set. She was throwing it out, so I said, "Oh, can I have it?" But it's one of them. It's just like so. Oh, we'll get. Nah, them. it's a, It's only a seven twenty p screen, so it's not. Terrible. Oh right. So. You know, it's not like it's been thrown out for any reason, um, other than he just didn't do 1080p anymore, but just to display a video, I mean, just to display things like that is more than good. I mean, if I want to go to 4K, I'm going to have to end, I'll probably end up with a new computer build instead, because yeah. nothing supports 4K at the minute. You'd be surprised at what you can get away doing 4K editing on. So uh, a lot of the time I've found that, depending on your editing software... I mean, I haven't got a 4K camera yet, so it doesn't yeah. matter, but... I think, because my computer's eight years old. Alright, so you've had your money's without it. Oh, about the old god, yeah. I mean, and it still runs, it, run, it still runs quick. I've got a, yeah. that runs on an i7, but I've got yeah. a two-year-old Lenovo with an i7. In. Yeah. And it's, that's slower than that. Yeah, well, what it is, is just because the Lenovo will have what's called a mobile i7. Yeah, well, so it's only running on something like 2.3 gigahertz. Yeah. Whereas the, that's yeah. an i7 with Sandy Bridge, and that's yeah. on the... Yeah, four point two. Well, at the as you know, I never had it over the clock because I don't want to burn it out. Yeah. Well, as you know, we can. As you know, with modern CPUs now, they do more per clock cycle. So mm. I mean, in there, that's only a um, Ivy Lake 
A5 in the gaming rig. But that's a, like I said, it's an A5. It's got 16 gig of RAM backing it up. And see, I've um, got 8 gig of mine. And actually, that's, that's this problem mm. I have on the computer. And it's got, um, it's got 16 gig of RAM. It's got two RX 480 graphics cards paired together. So what it does is, when I'm playing a game, one card renders one frame, one card renders another. So I get almost double the power. And seamless. Yes. There's some games that, there's some games that don't do it, but a lot of games do. Um, but I want to upgrade that at some point. Um, but I've been looking at the new AMD lines because price per, you know, for price per performance. Oh yeah. The new Ryzen's are untouchable. Yeah. I mean, AMD have always been more powerful at like half the price. Well, I'm looking for. I'm going to say, uh, as I said, well, I work for. A, a lot of people obviously stay away from AMD because they also just think that it's going to be. Not as reliable. Well, saying that, I might saying that next time I might have an AMD with the Corsair water, uh, the Corsair cooler that I've got. The AIOs. Because I got a H60 cooler, mm. and, it's, and it's like I got up the Intel like info about how hot it is. And it's like my stand runs at forty degrees. I'm gonna say something that's gonna make you hate me now. Power supply running that PC in there, Corsair AIX 1600i. Oh. You came out with my mining rig because that machine's been cobbled together off of bits out of the mining rig, second hand parts, and eBay special. But it still plays. All I need is because it's going into a telly, not a gaming monitor, I just need 60 hertz. Right, so yeah. It does 1080p at 60 hertz gameplay um, in high detail, so it trounces anything the console's put out quality wise. Um, yes. Yeah. It's on a telly. I'm not sitting that close, so it's good enough to play games. Yeah. Rather than to get, a monitor. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. Much so higher, I'm going to say yeah. it's, a, it's a 4K capable telly, but unfortunately, to get 4K. It's I not need, too bad, actually. I need to. Um, yeah, it's not too bad, actually. I need to replace the AV amplifier because the AV amplifier can't do 4K pass through. Yeah. And considering that is a THX certified amplifier. Um, and it sounds really good, I'm not willing to give that up. Because if I want 4K content, I just use Netflix to build it into it. Uh, it's all... My house shed backwards at the minute because I haven't got internet there. Mm. But I edit my videos, so it's great, I actually think it's quite good. Because mm. I get back at home, mm. in my room, mm. start editing videos, and you don't get distracted by anything. Yeah. Like Facebook, eBay, whatever. So what I, don't like really, I don't like going on my phone because it's just not as good. So what do you do? Stick it on a USB stick and then upload it? I've got, uh, uh, yeah, extra, I've got an external hard drive. Yeah. Stick it on that, go around to my mum and dad's, yeah. use my laptop, mm. upload using their internet because mm. they've got BT Infinity well, 2. As a video game. Person. Which they've still got. GLaDOS. <laughs> From Bartle. <laughs> hey, I've actually got... Where is it? 3D printed Mario Block. So, it's printed out by a printer. Yes. What it does is it does it, you know, the same way an inkjet printer lays down the line? Yeah. What it does is it lays down a point, you can see there the lines where the head moves across, it lays down a point, four millimeter line of plastic, then another line, then another line, then another line, then it moves up a layer and does the same. And that's why you can make anything now. Yes. Which is why I was thinking for things like control dials and that, which you know can be pretty pricey. You could just design, even though they're all pretty much the same, you could just design a generic one and resize it. Actually, it could be worth doing that because sometimes you'll get. Obviously, you go online, you can't buy one. Yeah, I mean, I won't recommend buying my printer because my printer is made of the finest Chinese. It is really bad, but you can get decent printers from brands like Creality and stuff like that. The only problem. With Printers from brands like Creative, they don't have um, what's called thermal runaway enabled. Where what th what happens is, say for example, you've got your print head is basically melting plastic, so it's at yeah. 200 degrees, something like that, 250, something like that. If the thermistor, which, you know, little thermos, th um, temperature sensor falls out, the printer doesn't know how hot this is out, and it notices it's cooling down, so it thinks, oh crap, I need to heat this up more and more and more and more. Yeah. And then what happens is you get a thermal, you get a thermal event where things start melting and stuff going wrong, and a potential fire risk. In the firmware that a lot of 3D printers run, they have thermal runaway protection in yeah. them. So if it senses that, so if it senses 
they put it on for too long. Yeah, it's heating up yeah, too it's long. Heating up. Too uh, long. If, it's, uh, if it says that it's spotted a heat up, you know, like these, if it tries to heat to 90 and it realises it's sat at 50 degrees for 50 minutes, it knows there's something wrong, so it shuts it down. Yeah. And that's what the printers do. They'll go, hang on, this isn't right, I'll shut it down. Or if it loses contact with the thermal sensor altogether, it just goes, nope, something wrong. But the Creality's, because they run a piece of firmware called Marlin, it's open source. Yeah. So what you can do is you can literally just download it on your PC, go into the firmware, change that setting, and then just re-upload it to the printer. I think they cost about 200 quid, something like that. I mean, you can get mine for about 120 quid now, but I've had to spend money taking it off of a plastic frame and putting it on a metal frame. No. But the good thing is, a lot of the 3D printers out there are all quite open source, you know, so there's a website out there called Thingiverse where you can download the 3D models of anything, pretty much anything you want. And you'll find, if you put in your makeup printer in there, like mine is ANET A8, I put in ANET A8, people have printed, people have designed new frames for it, new this, new that, new other, new mounts, new ways of holding the filament and stuff. And filament's pretty cheap, I mean, I can get a kilogram roll for about 60, about 40 quid. And think about how light the average thing is. Mm. I mean, that is, that's only a few grams. Because mm. what it is, is with 3D printing, yeah. you actually print them hollow with what's called infill. So, you know, if, if that was injection molded, that would be a solid lump of plastic. Yeah. But with 3D printing, what happens hollow. is, well, sort of, you print, you can sort of see it if I hold it up to the line yeah. like that. You can see the crisscross pattern inside, so it's mostly hollow, but it's still solid, yeah. Yeah. So that speeds up your print time as well. They're not fast, but I was just thinking if you get, if, um, for you and um, some of your friends who restore older machines, for parts that like die. You can't get. That, yeah, if you can get. I So we're going to say, I think, um, basically the king of the i3 designs is the, which is the generic printer. There's a company called Prusa, and I think they even have some software that will do. 3D model of photographs, you just photograph as much as you can all around it, feed it in and creates a mesh and then you put it into your 3D model and just tidy it up. So for things like, um, so for some of these weird and wonderful dials, you yeah. know, that, because plastic gets brittle as it gets older, yeah. doesn't it? Uh, and that's the trouble that we tend to have. Yeah. Um, and I was going to say, even things like, you couldn't do it in one run, but you could do a control panel. You could do panels in pieces and um, with, if you do it in ABS plastic, because that's ABS, there's ABS, there's PLA, there's all sorts of different plastics out there, but if you do it in ABS plastic, what you can do is you can get a um, nail polish remover. Yeah, you can... Spread it on one side, spread it on the other, and actually stick them together, and it melts the plastic and fuses it. Yeah. So, yeah, you might get a few little, like on this, you can see the lines where it's done each layer, but if, you were to, if I was to say that and put it basically in the tub, on a little mesh thing, you know, like a grill pan, put some acetone underneath it, covered it and put it out in the sun. The acetone vapours would actually slightly melt the surface and smooth it all off. So you can actually make it look like it's... All one piece. Have I given you something to investigate now? Yeah, because <laughs> I, know, uh, I, I know one of our fellow washing machine enthusiasts who ended up with the machine. He went over to Australia for... Mm. How long it was this thing? And it came back, and he had all his machines switched shipped out there, and had all his machines shipped back. Right. One of them came back, and it's. Now, uh, I don't quite want to get the point of that myself. <laughs> I'm sorry, it, 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 obviously, we're from different worlds. You know, I'm a car guy, engineering guy, and you're just getting a washing machine off because I'm getting shot of it. Um, but, uh, but I can't understand shipping, shipping some machines halfway around the world and then back again. <laughs> There's another, there's another one, there's a, one of our fel, fellow, they have like over, they've basically shipped mostly half of their machines from the UK to over to Australia. They live over there, but they've shipped them over because the, the, the guy actually originally lived in the UK and moved over there when he was a teenager, I think, mm. or probably a bit younger. And obviously you grew up them machines, but you can't get them over in Australia. And he goes, I want that old machine. Well, to be fair, this is where we went wrong. Back in the days when we sent criminals over to Australia, we should have said, no, no, you stay here. We're going across there because they've got the. Because they look at the look at Australia and look okay. at here, sun drizzle. It's not just that either. Saying it's, that, I'm renting drizzles. Um, drizzle is character building. 
It's not just that either. It's when I look at Australia, I go, it's open, it's free, slightly. You know, it's more. Not really, because they do have a lot of restrictions on video games. There's yeah. so many that are edited and can't be released and stuff like that. You know, it's like the it's like the original Wolfenstein one released over there, I think. Yeah, I think. So. I remember yeah. seeing a video about it. Was, it. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. I mean, it's long. It's obviously a game I haven't actually played, but I have heard about on again. It's it's more uh, other YouTube uh, stuff that can like go on gamer ranks and stuff yeah. like that. So I'm getting our oh, game ranks. I'm guessing you've probably seen Nostalgia Nerd. Yes, I have. Oh, he's really good. Yeah, have you seen? Um, he does some videos with someone else with a lass called Octavius Kitten. She does some quite good videos. Um, she did a history of. I can't remember what it was. The oh yeah, that's it. A history of one of these Tiger R Zone thing. Which were pretty good. Um, then there's Retro Man Cave, which does a load of old console restoration stuff yeah. like that. There's the, the, actually, to be honest, um, what was it called? I just because said before after we said uh, nostalgia. Nerd, yeah. I got into hits not because of games, but because of something about the VHS. Because I, I had VHS. I don't mind a lot. When I was a kid, I used to record everything on VHS tapes. I had over like. 150 blank VHS tapes called TV programs on. At the time, it's like, and I think it was something like about what, how, how we rose, obviously, why Beamers yes. sort of died off, and like, yes. it's just oh. interesting going back. Oh, because they wouldn't allow porn on Beatmax. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's one of the reasons why porn was not allowed on Beatmax. So, what happened was, um, People were buying VHS because um, it late was stuff night on five. Yeah, well, no, it, uh, other stuff. But the thing is, as well, um, companies like Rumbelows and stuff like that. Yeah. They got behind V8 because videos were very expensive. Because we've all heard the joke about the Fer Ferguson video start with the remote on a wire, which I'm sure your parents have probably told you. It's not like it was in my day. We had a kit. We had the remote, but it was on a wire. It went across the room, and if anyone tripped over it, we lost the. You know, the old top loading videos. Yeah. Um, but they were still hideously expensive, so back in the day... I knew that was one reason. Yes. Yeah. So back when people were renting these machines, they were going to Rumbelows or Radio Rentals or Rediffusion or, or, Rediffusion or whatever uh, to pay for their telly, which was on rent monthly because, again, colour tellies were expensive back then as well, and also they were very unreliable. So if you owned one, you had to have someone come out and basically fine tune it um, every few months, you know, every right. six months or so. Yeah, because they were very, very, it was very cutting edge tech. And this is, don't forget, a lot of this is before the integrated circuit came out, so a lot of it was all discrete componentry, you know, which I'm sure you've seen before when you've cracked open some of these that are absolutely ancient, not, <laughs> a, not a single IC in them. Um, yeah, it's, so, just a bit, it's just a load of relays and yeah. so passes you, and that's it. So you imagine, <laughs> imagine a telly. Trying to be nothing, trying to, with no IC at all. So components would get out of whack, stuff like that. So what would happen is, if you if you rented your telly, a lot of the time you got right. Well, we will pay. We will come out for and fix it every few months. And when they were paying the rent for the telly, the video recorders were there, and they were like, oh, the, oh, you, you know, it's still expensive, but I want you to buy one. And because a lot of them have VHS. That's what people bought. Well, that's how it sort of took off in the UK. Um, I mean, my parents had Vita, um, and Vita did have a better picture quality. It just did. But it also, you could only record for an hour. Yeah. Well, so the average film's an hour and a half. And it, they were bigger and clunky, weren't they, as well? Yeah. Now, now it's like there's, um, there's a, I think if you Google it, there's a website called Total Rewind, I think. Right. And that's a fellow who collects video recorders, and he's collected video recorders from all the stages, you know, so things like, even obscure things like um, the Philips Video 2000 platform, you know, which looked like an audio cassette that you flipped, a massive audio cassette you flipped over. And if you're interested in stuff like this, another YouTube channel to look at is Tecmo. You know, he does a lot of weird and wonderful old forgotten formats and stuff like that. Because I don't watch telly anymore, I just watch YouTube all the time. So I know, that's why I ended up on them. Because as daft as it seems, I've filmed them, filmed the machines, but I don't actually watch anybody else that has washing machines as such. I think there's only like... Mm. Unless it's like something that's really old, I know I'm never going to be able to get that yeah. unless... Well, 
I don't quite understand the wanting to watch a washing machine do its no, recycle. But, but uh, I understand the engineering behind them. Yeah, oh yeah. Because when you think about the engineering that goes into something like this, because I'm a complete engineering nerd. Yeah. Well, as you've seen by the house, even simple, th even the basic things are all built to last in this place. Because I always buy the ones that are going to be engineered to the hill. Yeah. Because you look, even something as simple as the god awful tappity, awful 1.3 engine in a Ford can. That is a marvel of engineering when you break it down and see just how it works. Because you've got pistons flying up and down at thousands of meters a second, revving at thousands and thousands of RPM. So that means your camshaft is spinning it even more. You know, I just I'm a massive engineering fan myself, so I admire the engineering, but I couldn't sit and watch one for four hours. <laughs> and some of these people do. You know, to be fair, the worst the, the most I've ever done is walk in and go, Oh it's still on. Click the kettle. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh that looks I like it's it... gonna jump all over the kitchen. Stop, stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh god it is jumping all over the kitchen. Hang on it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think many people out there like, because <coughs> Samsung did an advert, didn't they? A three minute advert. I don't know. They only did it once. It was on, go, it was, it was on um, quarter past nine on Friday night on Google, uh, Google Box. Yeah. Advert. But it was one advert and that was it. Yeah. And it starts off as a brand new Samsung ad, ad wash eco bug thing, I can't remember what it was. But mm. And it says you've been watching this this washing machine wash for a minute now, and it kept counting. Or whatever. It says the average person spent. I mean, what it's out. It's like something ridiculous, like a year or something for their life, basically mm. watching washing machines. Like basically, they're basically most most of the time it's at us watching did washing machines. Did you just thought, around. <laughs> did you just watch that advert and think amateur? <laughs> I could crack that out in a fortnight. <laughs> you did, didn't you? You just looked up and thought amateur. Pretty sure my own Samsung Eco Bubble has got more views than that <laughs> that video. I don't know, like I said, it's a it's a completely different thing to I just don't quite understand it. I understand admiring engineering, but I can't understand sitting and watching it. I just see washing machines are the same as cars, because there, mm. there's loads of different models, makes models of all different underneath. Well, all engineered to I know, I'll concern you falling in love with my cars, which is why the keys are fact where are my keys. <laughs> Right here! <laughs> <coughs> oh, good luck with fuel economy on one of them. <laughs> that blue one, 12. 12? 12. The black one, 30 if I behave myself. Yeah. And that's a diesel. The Honda's. The Honda's uh, quite good considering how um, fast to drive. Like right, I said, that thing, 12. <laughs> I can get it up to about 18 if I behave myself, but usually 12. Yeah, but I've always said this before, it's like I'd happily still get something like that, even though it's only 12 miles to the gallon. Oh, right, I'd be putting twice as much fuel in, but I'd be enjoying myself. <laughs> oh, I know what I've done with my keys, I'm still in the garage, I'm looking to take.
No, you can't. Okay. I can't go joyriding. No. <laughs> you couldn't afford the fuel, lad. No. As strong as it is. I actually don't care all the time. Because I do, I, it's like, I should buy a diesel. I don't like diesels though. <laughs> as much as. Well, I'll be Because diesels don't have, that, don't have that same sound as the petrol does. Every petrol engine seems to be unique. Whereas a diesel. Sounds like a diesel. Just sounds like a tractor. Well, I'll be honest, I've had a lot of diesels before. Before the black, before that, I had a five pot diesel Volvo and that was good. Um, Sound wise? Yeah. Because right. it had a, it had a um, five pot wobble. Alright, oh, yeah. yeah. It was so, a... so it didn't, it didn't sound like a normal diesel? No. It sounds. Yeah. And because that thing's a V, it sounds grunty anyway. Alright, oh, so it's still got that. Yes. Yeah. But the funniest thing is because that's got two turbos. It's actually a bi turbo, so you've got a little turbo and a big turbo. So what happens is, you get halfway through the rev range, you get a psh as the first turbo dumps, and then the second turbo takes over. <laughs> and you change gear and it psh! It's an auto, so. Is it? Yeah. It's got floppy pedals, so. And you know what? For an auto, it still shifts pretty damn quick when you put it in manual mode. Yeah. I You see, I don't mind that. It's like I wouldn't have a full auto, as such, yeah. unless it's a car that only came with a full you mean auto. Like that? Yeah, because like the they're known to have it. I mean, I'm quite lucky to get that Accord with an uh, with a manual gearbox because there's not that many of them. Most have automatic yeah. automatic gearboxes, even at that age. Yeah, well, that's because it was the market that was a buying them really, wasn't it? They just wanted something big to move stuff around and not worry. Yeah. But like I said, I. I do love my cars, there's something about them. Oh, yeah. I, I love every single one, it doesn't matter whether it's. Whether it's a. Like I said, my little Yaris is. Oh, I love one of the one funniest Yaris. things I ever saw is, you know, like, there's this American. Um, trying to get pictures up of the Yaris so I can show you, because it's a rare yeah. spec. I was going to say, there's one of the funniest things I ever saw at a modified car show was, you know, there was that trend for. Um, uh, you see it on American cars, when to put hydraulics on it. Yeah. I saw hydraulics on a Citroen Zara Picasso. So it was sat with his ass in the air like that. Even funnier, hydraulics on a ladder. Actually, that looked pretty cool. I was about to say, that sounds pretty cool actually. Because it's, it's, that's what you should do with a ladder. Yeah. Whereas like Picasso's a... are boring to start off with, yeah. and I think that's just like, you just wasted your money. Yeah. Well, lad, I don't know. It's always it, been is the, he took the Picasso badge off, you know, the Picasso sticker off it, and made his own custom one. That was in the same font, but it said Picasso. <laughs> um, and the Citroen badge, instead of it being up like that, it was down. Down. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna say there's um, there's a lad who I've seen at a few car shows before, and he's actually got um, I don't know what it is, but he's disabled, um, and he actually put hydraulics and that on his mobility scooter. He built a chassis, because they're all in one. So he built a separate chassis, mounted the mobility scooter to the chassis. Yeah. So it would do the three wheeling and stuff like that, and fitted a stereo system to it. And I take my hat off to him. It's he, crazy, but he, he is actually different, do, isn't it? You do the best with what you can, don't you? Yeah. To be fair, he's probably the only one who's got it as yes. well. So to stand out. Yeah. Even because obviously, if you use using that, you can just go out in public all the time because that's yeah. the only way you can move around. <laughs> then why not stand out a bit? Exactly. Because that's probably part of his personality as well. Mm. But now it was um, it was fun. And, it was quite fun seeing it in person. Mm. But uh, this is why I like engineering the fact that you can turn your hand to basically anything and think, well, that doesn't exist. Let's make it exist. Yeah. That's why I love. Th that's why I love three D printers. I mean, one thing I'm doing is there's a. There's a project out there called Enabling the Future, and if you've got if you've got a 3D printer and you can prove that you can print continuously, reliably, and stuff like that, you can join it. And what it is is to print prosthetics, but people yeah. can't afford them. That's my end goal. I want in that garage three printers lined up doing nothing but printing prosthetics day in day out. Yeah, they only last at the they're very basic because literally it's kind of a fake hand, but with a something you strap around the wrist and you move the wrist there and. It, pull strings that clamp them down, but it's only really for kids who 
as you know, kids grow up massively fast, so... Yeah, that'd be quite good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go, if you get a chance, Google it, because it's quite interesting. Because um, there's people who put the designs for these prosthetics up free of charge. People have designed them and put them online and said, here you go. Um, it's a business idea, that, yeah. isn't it? They only last a few, they only literally last a few months. Um, and they only, you can only use them if you say that you're going to use them for charity. Um, but for kids who are growing that quickly, they only need the prosthetic to last a few months. And it's until, and it's just to get them used to it, until they stop growing. And then the pair, you know, and then when they stop can growing, justify you can... spending thousands on a... A real... Yeah, because then they're used to it, if that makes sense. They're used to having yeah. a prosthetic, whereas there's a lot of... From what I can tell, there's a lot of people who have a missing limb. Because they've not had prosthetic growing up. It feels not right having one now. So it kind of, it's just one of these things that for a, a roll of filament, which costs you about 50 quid, you could probably get three or four hands out of that. So if, if you could spend 50 quid a year and give four people a hand, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> it's a no-brainer just to say, sod it, it's 50 quid. I can't get anything for 50 quid, so I'll just do it. Oh. Yeah. Give it back a bit as well. Yeah. It's one of these things that this is. I actually do like the fact I'm giving a helping hand. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. I can tell you're a dad because that's a dad joke. Yeah, it is. But now I'm going to say it's. It'll work, it'll work on Frankie when he actually understands. You know, there's <laughs> two of them in it, so. Yeah. But now it's things like that that I find quite amazing with technology. This is why I love my engineering. And again, that's why I got another crane here because they're just engineered. Yeah. Well, they're engineered and cheap. Because it's like... The way I look at it, it's the same as the Peugeot 107. It's engineered to be economical. Not yeah. engineered and then built economically. Yes. Well, yeah. a bit like the... Uh, Peugeot releases and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, look at... The, like I said, look at the Peugeot... For example, the Peugeot 107. Right. If we don't cut the entire boot out and we just have the... Boot lid is the glass. We only need one. It's going to cost I us less in that, and we strut. only need one strut, so that's money saved. Yeah. So we can spend money on a better strut and better quality glass. Yes. That's where I see. I see this make do it. They go right. Well, we don't need that, but by jettisoning that, we can afford to do this. We can afford stronger suspension. We can afford better springs. We can afford this. Better bearings. Mm. Usually, I, like I said, I mean, so far I've not. Really, see, I don't, I don't, I don't remember calling a granny with failed bearings. Mm. I mean, someone might, might turn around and say, "Well, I have," but mm. it's not like hot point and see where they happen every day. But I've also had the same argument with other people: is that actually cheaper brands like Hot Point, Hoover, whatever, they're only really unreliable because they're actually going to families, big families that use them all the time, mm. and it's like they can only afford that machine. You mm. can't afford to spend more money because they've got a family to feed yeah. at the end of the day. So. Well, that's why we. That's why when I found your channel, I decided to give you a call and see if you wanted that because apart from the couple of little faults he's got, I know that that's potentially got another good few years in it. Oh, yeah. So you can sell that cheap onto a family who needs one and because it's in, because it's not got any damage, well, it's not got much damage on it. Actually, one thing I like is that it's black. Yes. Because the amount of people who want a black machine, there yes. isn't any on the used market. It was so, do you know what? It's hard to find a new black machine, let alone on the new used market. Yeah. So that's at a premium now. That's going to be up on your shop going, it is on. It is going to be a bit You're going to be ringing them all going, right, I've got this black washer. You know, let's start the bidding at this. <laughs> and just ringing them going, yes, 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 yes. Lovely. Because that's what I've been also thinking of doing as well. Because it's like, I mean, I normally just go, I want, I'll put it off for this price. Because I just, you know... <laughs> Whatever, because it's this brand, it's this make, model, it's this age, it's in this condition. So we're going to go this price. But I have been thinking about putting... When I've when got a few in ready for selling off, but sell one a week on eBay, start to off at 99p, put it off for seven days, you still get your three months guarantee. And just see what happens. And see what happens to it, yeah. Because at the end of the day, as, someone, as everyone says, right, what one machine might be worth to someone worth might be worth time. more or yeah. less to somebody yeah. else. So I mean, like I said, that that machine, I know that that's you're not going to be selling that cheap because it's still a quality machine. And it's but, black. Yeah. And it's, I can't believe how it's it's an old machine at the end of the day. It looks so modern. Yeah. But the thing is, though, because it's a quality machine, that means someone's going to get a quality washer. 
that yeah. couldn't afford a quality washer. And at the end of the day, I don't want to sound awful, but you kind of rely on your washer to make sure you look clean and tidy when you go out. Yeah. You know, there's certain things I always maintain you spend money on. Telly, hi-fi, washer, dishwasher. Because it keeps your place clean, keeps your clothes clean and gives you something to do. I want video games, of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We can't decide the quality of our Xbox 360 now, can we? Because it's only manufactured by one person. I want you go out and decide and say, I know, I'm going to rip it apart and I build my own with better heat sinks than that so it doesn't fail. I nearly took mine apart to get it hydrodipped. <laughs> well, you would. <laughs> I've got Sorry the Xbox 360E. I've got yeah. the last one. Because... Mm. Uh, I didn't buy an Xbox 360 because it was too much. And I was like, I just next thing, oh, you can buy an Xbox 360 now for 180 quid because the Xbox mm. One's out. Yeah. But I'll be doing, I need a PS4 mm. so I can buy the Spyro and Crash Bandicoot trilogies. Yeah. But on the car, it's like, I keep wanting to make you know what? I just, down, I just emulate the original PlayStation. I've, I've got the original ones as well. Yeah. It's just that I want the, the new ones to see. The, the actual is, though, gameplay and graphics. The thing is, though, but I keep replaying you the be, old PlayStation yeah, ones. The thing is, though, you want to be careful because, especially in Spyro Crash Racing, they brought loot boxes and micro shots. I've seen that. I'm guessing you've seen Jim Sterling's if you want it. Well, yeah. I've seen it on even on on the actual uh, Facebook yeah. page of them bringing. It's yes. like, oh, you can now buy Komodo Joe and all that, that, and it's like, no, buy. You Should we would include get, it? I used to get that by winning X races. Yeah. Hmm. And now you can't. Well, what's the point of like. It's kind of like a bit of a downer then. It's oh. making it less excitable because you're not going to unlock anything. Yeah. Well, I've got a rule. I've only, and I've only ever broken it once, I don't buy DLC. I've broken that once for Forza, for the latest Forza Horizon game. Yeah, I did exactly the same. I've never bought DLC, but Forza Horizon. Horizon or was Horizon 2 mm. and it was like I needed this DLC pack so I could sort of do more races yeah. and it was like oh sod it why not it's sod it it was, it was like five, 15 quid I think mm. at the time yeah well we're going to say I actually once. have only time I'm going to say I actually have every single Forza Horizon game in there um, Horizon 1 and 2 in there I've got 1, 2 and not. 3 but I only bought it. 2 because I, I managed to get it like really cheap for the second hand in the uh, cash converters yeah I was say, you, are, um, you are talking to the man though who, when GTA 5 was released on the Xbox 360, I was one of the ones queuing up at midnight to get it on release day. I haven't got GTA 5. It's brilliant. I've, Trevor is one I've of the seen, greatest characters ever. I've seen. I've seen a lot of video gameplay of it. I go, it does look fantastic. Uh, but my downside with GTA is like a lot of games nowadays, they sort of bring it out and then they go, right, I'm just going to focus on the multiplayer mode. Mm. To be honest, the story mode of GTA is really good. That's the whole point of GTA. Mm. San Andreas is one of the best games ever, just because of its story. Mm. Uh, to be honest, the, I thought the GTA San Andreas graphics were worse than the Vice City mm. and GTA 3. But, the game, the, the story mode was mm. so captivating. Well, let's put this way, you're talking to someone who still plays text adventure games, so... Do you know what, if you want to see something funny, if you ever see a comedy show called The Dark Room, go and watch it. Right. It's basically a real life text adventure game. <laughs> right. Because you know when you play those text adventure games, the character, the, the, the narrator was always quite snarky. Yeah. Imagine that in real life, someone being that snarky in real life. At an audience. I haven't played a text adventure game, but I have played a sort of... Point and click. Well, no, was it? Yeah. Because yeah. what was it called? Uh, it, it was released in 2013 on um, Steam. Monkey oh, Island? No. The game didn't actually last that long because it was one of them. You, you just sort of you, you, you make choices mm. and your end is whatever you choice mm. you make. Oh, I know what you... Um... Yeah, the, last, the main character was the last called Max. No. Hang on, I think I actually know which one you're on about. It's called... 
That one? No. Yeah. No, I, I went for that's the a, one. That's a good one. But it was it was just a it was just a story mode. It was actually that's all it was, a story. And you created a story by choosing yeah. different choices. This but is you one had thing it does that's weird. When it ramping up to spin it turns the pump off till it spins up and then it turns the pump back on. Actually that's the start. It from it stops the it stops air locking. Alright. Um supposedly, but it, it's like the inset, turn it off for too long and then it starts sizzle locking because it's it's built up. It was cool. Two thousand thirteen. It's like life of something. I think another one you're on about. No, that's life. Of, life is strange. It's called the no, point. no, no. That's another one. There was another one. Life of. I don't know. But if you want to. With a name. Yeah. I tell you, if you want to play a good point-and-click game, try and get hold of a copy of Discworld. Right. Based on the Terry Pratchett book. So you've got Eric Idle doing the voice. And it really is that good. Well, as long as it's funny. It's funny. Oh, yeah. Because if you keep poking with your cursor, it loses its temper and takes it away from you. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old DOS game, so you could probably find it online. Yeah. And just use DOS box to play it. Um, but it's not, it's actually pretty good. Because uh, it's got Eric, it's got, like I said, Eric Idle does the main voice. There's that Tony Robinson, you know, who used to be Baldrick, does a couple of voices in it as well. Um, quiet, in it. So, it's actually not too bad of a game, really. The most sounds very similar to the Bosch. It's an uh, inverter, innit? So. Yeah. All inverters tend all... to. Yeah, but they have. I've noticed that there's still different sounds even with oh, converters. Right. Yeah. Um, because it's like the Bush one, I the tall kilo one, that has an inverter. It sounds exactly like the Primus uh, industrial machines I've also used. All oh, right. It has this weird where it sort of ramps up. Yeah. Which I've never heard anything else do other than these Primus. Uh, I thought it was a machine then, it's the first time, it's the first time, it's the first No, that was a car. Was it? Yeah. I do like the big exhausts around here. I like mine loud. <laughs> itself. But that's not loud. I mean... To me, I like a, I like a car that's... I, to me, a car can be loud if it's, got an exo if it's got an exhaust noise that's worth it. Yeah. My V8 is worth it. Yeah. If it's a four-cylinder Corsa, Oh. Where it goes blah 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 A Fiesta ST with one of those pop and bang maps where they rev it up and it goes bang 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 That's no 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 that don't sound good. That just sounds like your car's not good. There's a there's a lot of oh because some there are some nice beamers around with the engine notes are just like Oh that's the straight saying that it's just like all To be fair that's because a lot of beamers have got the straight six engine and they always sound Oh yeah, anything with more than four cylinders tends to sound really good. <laughs> to be honest, a lot of four cylinders can sound pretty good. That sounds. Do you, know, do you know what? Actually, that uh, and if, when you sort of rev it, it's not as it's not uh, obviously as loud, but you can hear the V6 NSX kind of noise mm. behind it. Well, it's like I. Honestly, but it's like a quiet version of the NSX. I say honestly, my favourite four cylinder is the old B series that's in the mini because it sounds a lot louder and it sounds a lot more vicious than it actually is. It is it? No, it's one of these engines that it's like... I'm laughing, but I know true, because it's like... It's like, it's like if you get in the... get behind, get in any small... Remember, the, it's like, remember the Fiat Pandas back in the day, where they had a little 750cc engine, but it was from what Fiat called the Fire Range, and that thing just begged you to rev it. It literally was kind of, go on, you can go on, go on, go on, go on, which is why when you had to look in a small time. Mind you car. saying that, you're going on about the Peugeot 107 and yeah. obviously the C1 and the yeah. Iago. They all have that little buzzy. Yeah, three cylinder. Three, and it's actually got a nice sort of like. It sounds like half a Porsche. Well, sort of. Well, yeah. But it's got that. It, it is actually a nice noise because it's a cheap car. Yes. And it suits it. Mm. It's like, uh, what was I going to say now? Um, like I said, if, if a car has got justification for it, I don't mind a loud exhaust, but when the you know, 
because I grew up in the... Your babies. Well, no, I came up in the... Um, oh, no, because I sort of got into cars during the Max Power generation, so... Everyone All right. wanted to know, everyone wanted a Citroen sax, so everyone wanted... And then they spend about a million pounds, like, tuning it with, like, a massive stereo and... Right, this, these massive it? stereos alone. You are talking to a man who split the metal work of a car with a stereo before. <laughs> How much have you actually spent on the stereo before? I didn't add it up. It was way more than the car. A bit like the Novas of the day, then. Ironically, the loudest car ever in the UK is a Vauxhall Nova. Because of its stereo? Yes. <laughs> Built by a lad from Dewsbury. Um, wasn't you, was it? No. <laughs> he built my Mondeo, though. Alright. But in this Nova, it did 171 or 172 decibels. Now, to put that into perspective... Yeah, I, I know like a jackhammer or a jumbo jet's like 115. Right, and for every three decibel, you're doubling the volume. Yeah, I know that. And the thing is, it was not... It was kind of just... Um, the, there used to be a competition format called DB Drag Racing, where people would compete to get the stereos louder, and this was kind of just a giant engineering um, experiment because... The windscreen was like three inch thick per specs. It was split down the middle and had bars welded in. The doors, again, three inch per specs on the door windows. Uh, door cars were sheets of MDF like that. And it was bolted shut. And that was all off one speaker. But it was one of those things where it's just, an, it's just a game. It's just something to play with. Have you taken that thing off? What off? What off? Oh, she pulled it down. Sorry, the rabbit's being destructive. Yeah. A bit like any indoor pet. Mm. Unless you know you have dogs or cats, as they still say. You tell me, they actually make pretty good indoor pets, you know. The toilet trains itself. They um, are two toilet trains themselves and everything. That's good. We didn't even have to try, we just literally went. There's the cage, there's where we put the hair, and they worked out, oh, there's my hair, there's my toilet, and never made a mess. Mm. How big are they anyway? Yeah. Average size. You can get massive ones though. Yeah. You can get ones that are the size of a dog. And they're kind of Flemish, they're, they're, that breed is called a Flemish giant, and they are massive. Seen pictures of them. But they only live for about... Six years or so, something like that. Right. The average bunny can live for about 12. Mm. Stuff gets still a rabbit at the end of the day, so it's still got a rabbit's heart and, think, and, like, and a rabbit's muscle bone structure, so think about it, it's having to move all that extra weight. Right, I see, yeah. So it's just wear themselves out quicker. Well, a bit like how Great Danes only last yes. seven years. Yeah, because obviously there's a lot. I mean, obviously their hearts give up because they're having to pump so much blood continuously. And when you look at a great day heart, it's not much different to a normal dog's heart. Yeah. That's why all Jack Russell is like 50 and a half. <laughs> hey, he was a big Jack Russell actually. He was the biggest one I've ever seen. Mm. Never seen a bigger one than our Jack. 50 and a half, mm. he was. It's just... Uh... He had like dog Parkinson's because he just shook all the time and eventually yeah. all his weight went mm. all in one go. And it just went right, well, no, it's. The muscle mass just went and it was and like. He went right, the kindest thing is to. Well, he got to the point where basically he couldn't eat. It's yeah. like, right. Kindest thing is. Yeah. I had to take him, the parent, I mean, I grew, I was nine when we first got him, mm. and I, but I'd already moved out, mm. and he was still my mum and dad's dog. Mm. But I had to go pick him up because my dad couldn't do it. Mm. My mum met, met me there yeah. and we took him in. Mm. But what was proud is that we both stayed there and yeah. watched him be put down. Yeah, well, we're going to say unfortunately. And he said, um, because I read up later on, that over 90% of Don't. them got out of the room. Yeah, well, we're going to say unfortunately. And they say it's, it's, it's a shame because the, the, the dog's immediate thought is where are you going? Mm. So they yeah. panic, whereas if you're already there. Yeah, yeah. they just relax. think you're getting another injection. Yeah. I was going to say, unfortunately, my the cause we had two rabbits, but one of them one of them died due to what's called gut stasis. Because um, a rabbit's digestive system is very weird. They have to keep eating. Right, you, know, okay. like, you know, like a dog can go for a day without food, and then it'll eat. 
Yeah. If a rabbit goes a day without food, their digestive system shuts down. They're right. So they have to keep eating continuously. And what happens is, well, unfortunately, this one got um, a hairball blockage in a small intestine. Oh. Um, now they managed to get it into the large intestine and they've got some, there's something, I, I can't remember the name of it, but they give them something to try and spur the digestive system on. And she did start eating, but unfortunately they couldn't get the digestive system up to speed quick enough for it. So, it's kind of sad that, because rabbits, what happens is they do have the ability to just say, no, I've had it, had enough. But yeah, rabbits need to come to, rabbits and guinea pigs and creatures like that need to continuously eat. They can't skip a day, if that makes sense. They need to always keep that digestive system going. Yeah. Because if they don't, it just stops. Our rabbit only lasted about four and a half years. But yeah. We had a guinea pig as well. Mm. And um, because they lived together, mm. when the guinea pig died, mm. the rabbit went just, into more. It yeah. just basically, yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to say this one. He, he just turned up, which was just open the cage, and it's like, oh, mm. I'm dead. <laughs> this one's getting on for about nine years old now, I think. Um, but when we got that grumpy thing, yeah. Well, when we brought our other one back from the vets to bury it, um, the vet said, "Let your existing rabbit see it." So, okay. And we so we put the, probably the dead one in the front room with our bunny, and she started circling it, and almost did a little dance. And apparently, that's the way a rabbit grieves. It says goodbye to its friend. Because what happens is when you get a rabbit and another rabbit, they bond together for basically life. And so this is why we've not got another one because if we brought another rabbit in, that one would attack it because it thinks there's an interloper on my territory. Yeah. So if you get two rabbits that haven't been brought up together, you need to put them into neutral territory and start introducing them slowly and slowly. You know, they're not like a dog which will go, oh, a friend. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying that, our Jack was um, not like that. Mm. Because we tried adopting another dog and we had him over for a couple of hours mm. and Jack just would not have it. it. As soon as we took him out, both for a walk, fine. But as soon as we brought him back into the house, or even like in the garden, it's like constantly nipping at it. Yeah. Stop it. Like, no, I'm gonna say but something. it could be because he was also, Jack was old anyway, he was yeah, already like say, 12 at the time, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we're going to say, so rabbits, they do tend to bond for life, and it's weird. So, if there's, you, so I think if that's what yeah. the rabbit did with the guinea pig, it bonded yeah. with it. Because mm. they were both young yeah. when they first got I'm going to say, even if you take one, they say that if you've got a pair of rabbits and you take one to the vet, you should take two of them. Take, take both. both of them. So they can be together. Okay. To comfort each other. Otherwise, you get one rabbit that stayed at home, wondering where its friend's gone. We do that with cats, even if only one's going. Mm. Oh, well, Sophie does anyway. Mm. That's a little bit safe now, but yeah, yeah uh, but we got they've got three. Well, we got three cats. Just mm. that's it. But if one going, they all three go. Yeah. But now we're gonna say, unfortunately, rabbits are also very expensive pets to go to the vet because that operation costs nearly a thousand pounds. In fact, no, it costs more than that. Once we factored in board and everything, it was nearly it was about one thousand seven hundred pounds for that operation for that unsuccessful operation on the rabbit. Worth it. I think it's still going to be oh, worth it. Because we didn't have um, pet insurance, but you give, we gave her a chance. Yeah. And she, she was would have been kicking herself if you didn't. Yeah, she was old and she was she was getting on and she was always a bit of a grumpy cow, so. <laughs> still not the mad way though. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say, the um, indoor rabbits, they actually learn you. They actually learn your ways quite well because apparently my two learn what my car engine sound like. <laughs> so they would ignore Idiot. Yeah, they would ignore every single car unless they heard one of my cars coming down the road and then they would run to the door and wait. No oh, not joking they like would, a dog. Yes, they would run to the front door and sit there waiting for me. Because my other half has, has seen them do it. And if I wasn't home on time, the one that's passed would actually lay down in front of where I sit waiting for me. If I was not home on time, same as ironically, if we don't feed them on time, they both, if we didn't feed them on time, they tell you. <laughs> actually, ha, you can, I'm not joking, you can nearly set your watch by a rabbit and its, diet and it's um, food schedule. <laughs> Literally, if I'm running late for work and I come down even 10 minutes later, yeah. that rabbit sulks with me. Obviously, I feed her before I go to work. But if I'm 10 minutes late coming downstairs feeding her, 
she'll sit and she'll ignore me. Because when a rabbit ignores you, it turns its back on you. <laughs> and looks over its shoulder to see if it's upset you. The other, the other oh. thing they do is they'll um, they'll flick their feet at you. Because they're trying to kick dirt in your face. Because <laughs> they try because they think everyone's a rabbit, so they're trying to kick dirt in the rabbit's face. So if, that's if you've ah. really upset them. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna say even it really annoyed me, I'm gonna say, but they can be really grumpy, but you know what? For house for house pets they're not bad actually. They are very timid, you need to spend a lot of time getting them. The funniest thing I had with our rabbit was the fact we was a jack of the dog. Is it uh Thumper was only like Thumper the Rabbit was only like six months old. Dr. Yeah. Russell's four month old, and he accidentally escaped out the back door. And the, the guinea pig was always in the run, yeah. and the rabbit went freely around the garden. Yeah. Jack got out, ran after the rabbit, round and round and round the, the cage. The next thing, the rabbit turned round, punched the dog. Oh, do you know what? They can be very, very, rabbits can be so territorial, it's unbelievable. And then the dog's like, what do I do? <laughs> Honestly, if you just put in Territorial Rabbit on YouTube, you'll find so many videos of them chasing off massive dogs and cats and all yeah. sorts. Because they are just such daft creatures. But Although neither of them lost, learned the lesson, because the Jack, the Jack Russell got out yeah. again at some point mm. and chased after the rabbit again, and then it's like... Mm. Mm. But no... Like, Not if you like learning lessons, do you? Mm. Well, I mean, it's like I know one lass has got a pet hedgehog. You can get domestic hedgehogs. Yes. Yep, there is a breed of hedgehog called the African Pygmy, which you can legally own as a pet. Alright. Yeah. Actually, I think I've heard of them, actually. Not so they don't have fleas or anything like that. That's a very. Listen to that joke. Oh, Did yeah! You? Never heard that before. That sounds like a mealy. It sounds like a faster version of the mealy. And now it sounds like a normal mealy. Because there's only sort of three towels that can't quite balance perfectly, so. But it's doing a good job. Yeah. It doesn't spend too much time balancing. No. And then time out. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, that one I'm giving you now, it literally the problem was that because the suspension's gone. You know when it's got to do its yeah when it's got to do its first spin to get up to speed so it can do the balance test, it would yeah. literally just go. <laughs> Oh right, because yeah, it normally goes up to about 125 yeah. watt RPM. Yeah. yeah, and obviously when it's, cause it's a 7 kilogram drum when it's got a load of wet towels in it, that's still a load of force it needs to deal with. So, so need, yeah, it'll be damp, it's, it's probably yeah. just dried out. Yeah. We do, just dry out over time. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just obviously as, well, I know that it's easy enough to get to because you just have to support the bottom of the drum when you get the dampers off, but... That's no, I, I, no I, I actually put them on the, if you just lay them on the back. All oh, right. You can do it then. And do it underneath. Yeah, because then you, yeah. you've actually got free movement yeah. and you're not mm. you're not having to hold yeah. anything. You're not having All to, right. And you're just not, because they're normally holding with the, mm. the plastic, they've got yeah. the plastic pins. Plastic pins, yeah. But you yeah. sort of push it down, knock yeah. it out. Yeah. I'm going to say that was one of the first things I've checked. Um, yeah. Saying that, I'm saying that, the better ones, the ones where they're actually bolted to it. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't get that anymore. But no, nah, the only other problem with that generation of grain yet is obviously the top a lot more than the bottom, so you know, like that. Yeah, this is they, they fix this problem with this. In fact, actually, actually, this one still does do it a little bit. You can see only a tiny bit. I'll tell you that, what, put though, your finger there and you'll feel it. Yeah, but that's nothing compared to the Senso Care, which is the last generation. Mm. The, they do that. They actually changed the design of this because this the, the design of the yeah. sides because it was mm. that that was creating it. But it would be perfectly stable, like the but the whole thing would be shaking like that at yeah. the top. Yeah, which is why it was so hard to get them balanced. I think that one's from it a little bit. It would balance bad. fine, but it was just the fact that it was because of the structure of it, the actual design of the sides, mm. it didn't vibrate. Yeah. But the actual machine shook a bit, it shook about uncontrollably. Mm. Which I think probably put a lot of people off because you see something shaking and think, oh god, it's gonna break. No, it's actually designed to do that to try and get rid of forces. So I think that's what they did, they actually designed, they actually engineered that in as a way to try and get rid of some of this extra Dissipate energy. Dissipate it, yeah. yeah. But, and they are, they are designed in that way. I mean, like I said, you can see this one wobbling now, but not as much as 
you lost the muscle, and that's how it should be. Mm. Well, I mean, like I said, it only does a 1200 rev spin on this, so. On this side, but yeah. you can still hear it pulling water out. Because as it's pumped underneath the sink, it's weird, you can always hear it whenever, the, whenever it's got water coming out. Well, like I said, the, I mean, the faster you go, it's not. It's like a 2000 RPM, like I've got. Mm. They're not half as dry yeah. as a 1000 RPM. Mm. I, mean, I would actually probably put money on them if this did a full 1600. I'd probably put money on stuff coming out of this dryer just because of the size of the drum, so the bigger force is involved. Mm. Sorry, I'm a, like I said, I'm an engineering nerd. I look at stuff like this. <laughs> but like I said, I'm, I'm hoping you'll find. Because I don't do football whatsoever. I don't understand football. Like I said, I'm hoping you'll find a good one for that one because it's um, it was the first machine me and, like I said, the first machine me and our last bought when we moved in together. Yeah. Uh, and it's done us proud. And like I said, we've got the matching tumble drawer upstairs, but that's still fine, so you're not having that. Because I know that people would really snap your hand off for, for a matching black set, wouldn't it? Yeah. Has that got the display on it? No. Oh, it's Is got it a just... timer. No, it hasn't got a display on it. It's literally just got three lights. Is it, Sorry, is, it just a tall, is it just a timer model? No, it's not. It's got all the sensors. Has it got sensor drive as well? Yeah. Because the only ones I've seen of that area at the minute are just the time ones, which is the same way that the Zanussi's work as well, where it's fixed in. No, no, it's got full sensor and everything. And like I said, I know that people really snap your hand off for a matching black and white set, but you're not having it. <laughs> at least I'm honest about these things. Yeah. Well, it's very rare I get a set in, but when I do, yeah. they actually get a bigger discount off mm. when they uh, buy them together. Right. As as um, mm. so let's say the wash is hundred and twenty and the dryer is hundred and twenty, mm. but you can buy both of them. Mm. It'd be like two hundred. Yeah. So you weren't bothered about picking this one up until I said, "Oh yeah, it's black," and then you're like, "Yes, let's have that." No, well, was that just, <laughs> no, I was still having it even when it wasn't black because at the end of the day, you'll know that it'll sell. Yeah, it's a granite. It's not. It's not even a cell, but the person who will find it will go have a, end up with a decent machine. That's the thing. Me. That's the thing. Me and Alice were very big fans of recycling where possible. You know, it served its purpose for us. It is fixable, but it's not something I well, can um, fix. <laughs> so drum lights are on, but uh, hang on. See, <laughs> you're leaving them in and taking out. Ah. Oh, I know you want to do a thing on the machine, don't you? Just have a... Yeah, just do a bit of an overview, like all the programs and... What each thing does. Alright. I've had it 